He's also taken up for Diamond and Silk when we was up there at that judiciary here, yeah. hearing. So you all, please welcome to the show, David, David Harris, Harris Jr. Jr. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, David. Hello, ladies. Hello, so Harris. honored to be on with you ladies tonight. You're amazing. I've been watching you guys for, for a long, long time and a huge supporter of you. So it's an honor to be on here tonight. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank now, you. you know we wasn't going to let this here just go under the rug. Mm -hmm. So first, I'll, first of all, I want to know, how long have you been making your podcast and doing it on social media, especially Facebook? So I started uh, right around October of 2016. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a public figure page. Uh, I just had a, a couple thousand friends on my personal Facebook page. And it was after the third debate between Donald Trump and Hillary, I saw such a huge chasm between uh, where I felt Donald Trump wanted to take our country and where Hillary wanted to take our country, especially over the issue of life and the unborn, uh, the lives of unborn babies. Mm -hmm. And I just could not stay silent. And I went on my personal Facebook page. I just ran it for about 13 minutes and it just, uh, it, it, it took off. It wound up going over 400,000 views. And the messages that I received from people from lifelong Democrats that said that uh, their whole families were Democrats and they probably would get ostracized if they did not vote for Hillary. The messages poured in from people of all backgrounds and, and men and women both that said, you made it really clear that I cannot vote for Hillary. I have to vote for Trump. Wow. And so it was from those messages that I said, I've got to have a page and I've got to just try to continue to reach people as best I can. So you, so you gain these followers, yep. you're very patriotic, mm -hmm. you're talking about the love for this president, you're talking about how we don't need to vote for who we call Crooked Hillary. Mm -hmm. I started a website, DavidHarrisJr.com, where I wanted to bring articles and news to the people that I don't think that they get to see from their mainstream media. It's continually slanted to, uh, to lean in towards the left and against Donald Trump, and I feel like there is just a lot of Americans out there that want the truth and know they're not getting it from mainstream media. So I've got uh, a few writers that are amazing. They bring nuggets of truth and we post those articles on my website. And as you ladies know, you can also get those articles monetized with Facebook, where when somebody's viewing an article of any kind from anywhere and they see ads in there, those generate revenue and that helps us do what we do and make our page bigger or reach bigger and grow. Well, back uh, four months ago, this happened the first time without any warning whatsoever, Facebook just cut off uh, all, my, all my monetization. And okay, wait, 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 wait. Starting to do pretty wait, 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 wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. So when did you start put, putting the articles on your page? When was January, it? January of this year. I started with uh, DavidHarrisJr.com and started putting articles on the page. I got it approved through Facebook initially uh, within just a, a few weeks and then beginning to, began to post articles on a regular basis and, and, uh, and had those articles filled with, uh, with Facebook's instant articles. Okay, and so with the instant articles, were you getting good engagement? I was getting great engagement. And the thing with Facebook is they like people to stay on their platform. And the information that you was writing, were these like your opinion pieces about what was going on in the news? Well, there's my writers and myself will add some of our opinions to what's going on with the news, but we're always very clear and very sure that we're sharing nothing but true news. We're not sharing okay. fake news and we're not trying to make stuff up. We're not trying to say things that aren't there. Right. We're not trying to say the sky is falling and the world's ending because of this or that. We're just trying to share the truth. But so we'll you, add our own it personal was legitimate. On it was legitimate sources that you were getting your news from. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of times it can be sources from Breitbart uh, or different credible sources like that that will you know, take a segment and then our writers will add their perspective to it or I'll add my perspective to it. And then, uh, and then publish it on my page. Okay. So after you publish it on, on Facebook, it's garnering views and you're making a little money. You, it started in January. When yeah. did they shut you down? Uh, so I started the page in January. I think I was monetized by the end of January. April, uh, April uh, 26th, uh, they shut it down completely with no, no, no warning, no notice, no alert, nothing. And it had just started to really grow uh, pretty well as well. I was really excited for the opportunity to continue to grow and build my audience and page kind of like you ladies are um, and just get the message out more to more people. And they just chopped it off. No word, no warning. Nothing. How did you know that they was taking you down? How did, did they send you a message to let you know that you, they was going to demonetize the articles? No, they didn't send any message at all. Uh, when, you're, when you have access to instant articles, you can log in and look at your published articles and you see that they're published. 
uh, I logged in to review them. And it's a way for you to also to make sure that if there's a spelling error or if there's any right. kind of error in the HTML, you can fix it. I logged in and every single one of my articles was unpublished. That's With how no I found out about it. notification or anything on your, on, your, on your page, let you know that we've restricted this or anything like that. No, None nothing of, that. of the kind. Wow. See, now so, that remind me of an inside job a hit. Mm -hmm. So who yeah. ordered the hit is what I say. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and when I say you became a threat, what it is, first off, you, you are a man of color. You're black and you're going against the narrative on the left. And yeah. you're educating more people. So now you've become a threat. Mm -hmm. to the yeah, they don't, okay, they don't so like I, us. We, okay. we don't fit their narrative. Right. That's so right. David, and I just want to get into this here. So after April, did they give you the articles back or they just, they just take them away? Or how did they give them back to you? So they said that I had a 90 day suspension. I wait, patiently waited. Uh, I tried to appeal it. They said 90 days after 90 days, um, they said, you're not going to get them back. And I finally sent another appeal. And I said exactly what you ladies are saying. I said, you know, as a Christian, as a black man, as a conservative, I feel like this is very biased towards me. I've never gotten any alerts. I've never gotten any notices for you guys to just revoke this for me does not seem right at all. I got an email back that night that said, we're going to go ahead and grant you back your instant articles. So that was just the end of last month. That was July 26th that I got it back. And the same thing just happened again this last Friday, which is what I was absolutely beside myself. Mm -hmm. I was getting ready to go live on my yeah. show. I have every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, I opened up my, my articles to just check and make sure that they were all good. And once again, they were all unpublished. Oh, no yeah. notice, no alert, nothing. And I had just, only three weeks, I had been building it back up mm -hmm. and they just totally just chopped it off. No reason, no, no, no nothing. It's just, it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and see, this is why we call this segment "What the Zuck," because we don't know what the Zuck is up with Mark Zuckerberg. That's right. But he yeah. needs to get this stuff together. Yeah. And this is what we call. See, this is what they do. That's right. That they choke mm -hmm. you and really pull your platform from under you. If you was talking to Mark Zuckerberg right now, what mm -hmm. would you say to him? You know what I'd say to Mark? I'd say, Mark, you have created something that is amazing. Facebook, the platform is absolutely incredible. Its ability to connect people from all over the planet uh, via live stream, via, via just sharing information, it's amazing. Why taint it? Right. Why use that power and taint it by, by castrating literally an entire group and section of individuals yep. that are, are tired of being messed with in, uh, in this country? You know, yeah. conserv black conservatives are constantly, you know, the uh, the ones that uh, that are getting the bad, the bad in the stick, the raw end of the deal everywhere. You know, I don't deal yeah. with racism from white people anymore. I deal with it from black people. They're yeah. the ones calling me Coon and Uncle Tom and Porch yeah. Monkey and all these other things. Yeah. And so for, for a person that's created something that really could be a, an absolute blessing and is a blessing to a lot of people, yeah. I don't understand why why Mark would want to uh, to taint it by allowing you know, these kind of ideologies and these bots to ruin what is a special thing to so many people. We should yeah, all have free speech. Yeah. We should all be able to share what's on our heart uh, freely without uh, without a big brother without type system sense. shutting us up and shutting us down. Yeah. Right. Well, you can, uh, they can follow me in, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube at David J. Harris Jr. Uh, my website is davidharrisjr.com. And I actually just announced um, part, I've been working on this for a while and with Facebook doing what they're doing to me, I just announced the opportunity for people to pre-order my book, which is entitled Why I Couldn't Stay Silent. And uh, I've got some very interesting chapters in there. I've got one called um, When America Elected the First Black President, I Cried, but it wasn't because of, it wasn't because of why you might think. Uh, I cried a little bit because of the monumental aspect of, uh, of voting for and electing a black man as president, but I was really sad that it was Obama. And I, I, bring, I break down exactly why I was sad and exactly what he did uh, that should expose who he really was as the president and commander of chief and what he was trying to do to our country. Uh, wow. I've got a chapter in there called I'm a conservative Christian, and I didn't know there was any other kind. <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> There's, there's, uh, there's so many liberal Christians. I don't understand how they can stand on and support a platform that supports the thing that the, the, the things that the Democrat, uh, Democrat Party does. Yeah, uh, I agree. But there are. 